Let me begin this afternoon by just reiterating that the, the families of the victims and all who were involved in the incident this morning are in our thoughts and prayers. This is a, a horrific incident, and we really are grateful to the quick and decisive actions of the officers and fire personnel who responded this morning. What we know at this point, this morning, at approximately 9-11 a.m., the Emergency Communications Center received numerous 911 calls reporting shots fired inside the lobby of the Fifth Third Center located at number 38 Fountain Square. Multiple officers responded to the scene as continuing reports of an active shooter continued to flow in. As the officers approached the lobby area of the Fifth Third Center, they encountered a lone gunman actively firing shots in the first floor lobby of the Fifth Third uh, building. Four of the responding officers engaged the shooter with their firearms striking him multiple times, causing him to fall to the ground. As the officers made entry into the building, they handcuffed the suspect and secured the scene. Tragically, five victims were shot by the suspect. Four of those victims were transported to University Hospital and one was determined to be deceased at the scene. Two of the four victims that were transported to the University Hospital Medical Center later succumbed to their injuries. The suspect was also determined to be deceased on scene. He has been identified as Omar Enrique Santa Perez, a male 29 years of age. We're asking at this point anyone who is a witness to these events or is in need of victim services, anyone involved in this, they can contact the Cincinnati Police Department's Victim Assistance and Witness Advocacy Program here at 513-352-6421. Additionally, at this point in the investigation, it is still very much an active investigation. Uh, we are still processing evidence from the scene. We've also executed a search warrant at Mr. Perez's residence in North Bend, Ohio, with the assistance of the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. We are still processing that evidence and uh, looking for any opportunity to gain greater insight as to the motive of this morning's events. We are also confident at this point that the shooter acted alone and there are no additional threats to the public. I want to again reiterate my praise for the responding officers in this active shooting incident. Their bravery and heroic actions stopped this shooter before his rampage continued to do more harm. We are grateful to our fellow first responders that have also aided us in this incident. I want to personally thank Fire Chief Winston and the brave men and women of the Cincinnati Fire Division for their help. Also the many federal agencies that have also offered their assistance in this case. I also want to recognize the employees of the Fifth Third Bank who follow their active duty training and drill protocol and the University Hospital Medical Center staff who responded to this influx of victims and did everything possible to preserve the loss of life. And I want to thank you all, the media, for relaying this information. Next steps, as usual. We will have a more detailed press conference sometime tomorrow, probably in the early afternoon. Uh, what I can tell you, there is video that was captured, the body camera footage of the officers. There's video footage from the Fifth Third Center and around Fountain Square. So we are, our investigators here are in the process of putting that together so that we, we are able to provide that as timely as possible. I believe the mayor wants to say a few words and then I'll open it up to whatever questions I, I can answer at this point. 
continues to be a sad day for the city and for the victims and those recovering from injuries uh, and the fear that has plagued too many cities uh, hit home today. And um, it's hard for it all to sink in, but it really did happen. Uh, we will get through this um, together and we'll have to give extra care to those who are suffering loss. I did have the chance to speak today with uh, the leadership of uh, Fifth Third, uh, Greg Carmichael and Rich Grader of Graders, and uh, they were emotional in their praise of the Cincinnati Police Department and the Cincinnati Fire Department for the bravery that they uh, showed in preventing additional loss of life. Uh, it's clear, and it will be more clear tomorrow and when the videos are released, uh, just how scary the situation was, the amount of fear and anxiety that those who had the unlucky wrong place at wrong time to be there at that time. Uh, this is clearly an act of, of uh, grotesque violence uh, to innocent uh, people, uh, and it should f frighten all of us. And it's happened too much around this country, and we as a country have got to figure out how to end it. That's all I have at this time. Again, as a city, we just want to extend our heartfelt condolences to the family and the friends of those that lost their lives today in this tragic incident. And again, as everyone's been given tremendous praise to our police department, our fire department, and also our emergency communications center, they did a phenomenal job here today. And without their swift and timely and efficient actions, it would have been a lot worse. So we're truly grateful for the work they did today. Thanks. Again, at this point, we haven't been able to make any determination to that. Uh, again, the investigation is only hours old, but we have been able to verify that he is not a current or former employee of the Fifth Third Bank, and we're not aware of any employment of any of the other surrounding businesses. Did he take the bus there? Not certain how he got there. We do know that he did enter several businesses around Fountain Square prior to entering the Fifth Third Center, but not certain how he got to Fountain Square. Can you say if he was in Potbelly and perhaps he, that's where the started? He did enter Potbelly. Uh, he was in there prior to entering the Fifth Third Center. Don't believe he was in there a significant amount of time, but he, he was in there prior to entering the lobby of the Fifth Third Center. Talking about one weapon, multiple weapons, what kind of ammunition? One, uh, we do, what we know at this point, it is a, a nine millimeter semi-automatic pistol that he was in possession of. He did have uh, multiple magazines and a significant amount of ammunition. I'm not sure of the exact count. I want to say in the neighborhood of maybe 200 rounds. Did he possess the gun legally? Based upon the what we've been able to determine at this time, it does appear that the firearm was legally purchased. Do you know if this was an act of terrorism or just an isolated incident? We don't, we don't have any indication of that, nothing that we've discovered. Uh, there may be a possibility that there's some mental health issues involved here, but again, the investigation is only hours old. We're still trying to determine motive. There's nothing that has given us conclusively as to why he would do such a horrific thing. What can you tell us about the victims? Have you got in touch with all of their families? And can you tell us anything more about them if they worked in the building? And we'll like have more on that tomorrow. Um, I believe the next of kin of the victims have been notified through various means. Uh, we hope to be able to share more with that tomorrow out of respect to the families. Chief, it might be too early in the investigation for this, but any indication from Fifth Third that the gentleman may have been turned down for a loan or something tied financially that he just came back to? Not that we've discovered at this point. No, no cause or motive that we've been able to determine at this point. And has Mr. Santa Perez been in the area for a while, do you know? We believe he's been here at least since 2015. Does he have ties to Boris Park? Not that I'm aware of. I'm not sure of his previous addresses. One more question. Can you give any insight into it, how long this attack could have been planned out? We don't know. We hope in the coming days that maybe we can determine more about his planning and his motive and what, again, what caused him to commit such a horrific act. What is the search 
weren't helpful. I'm not asking what you recovered there, but was it helpful in your investigation? I can tell you at this point what, uh, what's been relayed to me, nothing that speaks to, to motive. So we have not been able to determine that. Can you give us a rundown of uh, can you give us a rundown of how your officers are holding up the ones who were there first? You know, I've had an opportunity to speak with the officers. Uh, obviously, to to go through such an event, you know, you are shaken up. But they uh, they responded to their training. Um, I told them that I was very proud of the work that they've done, and you know, they're 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 fine. They're doing a great job. There are reports that he had hundreds of rounds on him. Is that that's correct? He. Um, you know, I've heard some, uh, we haven't counted the exact rounds. Our criminal is in the process of doing that now. But he did have, uh, he, like I said, he had multiple magazines, and he did, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of a, a couple of hundred rounds of ammunition. Your report's also that one victim was shot multiple times. I believe, that, that, I believe that several of the victims were shot more than once. We hope to have more information on that tomorrow. So thank you. Thank you all.